Got some, an electric fence has been acting up and it's been so dry, I honestly thought that that was the reason is because the soil moisture is just dry down in the ground where the ground rod's at. But let me show you what's going on here. If I turn on this, it's red, red, then it's green, then it's red, then it's green, then it's red, and I can tell that it's not energized. Let me show you how I can tell that with some tools. And actually, I'll just talk about it while I'm walking up here. So there's a couple of different electric fence testers. I've got a couple of different ones. I've got a really old school one. These are kind of really basic. And to be honest with you, I don't think they're worth 10 cents. Then I also have a digital one that works way better, but they can also be problematic. This is the digital one. They are a no contact fence tester. And then I also use just a regular electrical voltmeter. So let's go up and I'll show you like this fence. This top wire should be hot. One of the things I forgot to mention is that if I disconnect the wires from the charge controller, the light is green and the light is strong. Now, two charge controllers both had the same problem. So it doesn't matter which charge controller I hook up, neither one of them works. And basically what happens is they're showing a weak signal at the charge controller even though everything on the fence looks fine. Now I went ahead and grabbed just a normal voltmeter to kind of show you how I'm gonna use this in a minute. But what I'm gonna do is try to set this up where I don't have to hold this camera and show you some of the tests that I'm gonna do. The first is going to be, set this down. I'm gonna remove the wires and clean the wire because this is an aluminum wire and I have seen these wires get corroded before and then when they get corroded, they don't want to work. So if the wire was corroded, that would also cause the problem on both fences or on both charge controllers. So I'm gonna use sandpaper to just rough up these ends a little bit more. to make sure we're getting a good contact. But I'm not gonna hook the wire up yet. So this one is the negative. I stuck behind me. This next one is the positive. I'm also going to clean up the end of it after I straighten it out some and make it easier to work on. Now this one does look a little corroded. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This one actually does look a little bit corroded. In the scheme of things of how electric fences should look, this positive wire looks a little corroded compared to the ground. So this could be the problem. We're going to find out here in a minute. Sorry if this wasn't in frame while I was cleaning this. I'm basically just using the sandpaper to sand it down until it's nice and shiny. Now generally, I will try to use like um, what's called dielectric grease that you would normally put on like automotive battery terminals. You can put that on these and that will actually keep them uh, from corroding so much. 
But what happened was I didn't use this electric fence for about two years while I was fighting cancer. And then I then also uh, changed the solar pack or the solar controller that I was using. And I didn't put dielectric grease on the new controller. So I used to use this Parmac all the time that's over here, the six volt one. And I switched it over to the one I used to use with the goats, which is 12 volt and a lot more powerful. So the next thing you can do, though, if you've got just a normal, regular automotive home uh, multimeter, you can set this on ohms and you can check how many ohms is across these wires. after I hook it up right. All right, so I had zero that way. So I should be able to put this across the wires and it should measure between 1,000 and 10,000 ohms. And if it don't, there's a connection problem somewhere else. And I am measuring, I'll show you here in a minute, about 50 ohms, which is actually really good. Let me bring this camera over where you can see this. Bad thing about doing YouTube videos when you're the only person is stuff like this. All right, so I'm going to hook this back up. Of course, it's going to be out of frame. You're not going to be able to see it. You're just going to have to trust me. <laughs> so there's one hooked up. Now where's my other one at? So I touch the two wires, measure the ohms. There we go. So our ohms is actually pretty low for an electric fence. So if it was a because of the ground being so dry, that would be really high ohms way higher than what it was just showing on there. So it's a possibility that it could have been contributing the dry ground, but I'm starting to think now that it was that positive connection end that I just cleaned up. So let me go ahead and hook this back up and try it again to see if it's still not working or not. I see that it's mostly green now. It seems pretty weak. I haven't seen it even once go red. So let's go test the fence. There's like nothing, it's doing nothing. So I checked the weeds all the way around this. They're all good. There's no weeds that would be impeding the electric fence. And I've also tested over here, right at the connection. And you can see once again, it's just not registering anything. Now I found that I had a wire laying across this that I thought was grounding it out and I took and got the wire up off of there. So I know that's not the problem. And I've looked at pretty much everything to see like what could be causing this to, to act up. So this is the way this one works. You basically just walk up to the fence, you touch it. Now this other one's a little bit different. You take and you put either the probe or the fence on one place and then you touch the ground with the other 
and you can't see it because it turned around there but it's not showing anything either so that makes me almost think that there's something wrong with the controller so let's go up and look at some common things that can go wrong with them and for that you're generally going to need some pliers and some sandpaper we'll be right back I see that it's mostly green now. It seems pretty weak. I haven't seen it even once go red. So let's go test the fence. Still nothing. We'll go down here and test right where the connection's at. Still nothing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the wires from one charge controller and put it on the other charge controller. There's also the possibility that just my battery has gone bad. I mean, it's kind of weird that both batteries would go bad at the same time, but they are three years old. So this is the ground wire. See, the bad thing about this one is it's kind of hard to clean the connections on this one. just because of the way it's designed. I can clean this one flat surface right here, which I'm gonna do real quick. But as far as cleaning, like the contact point, that makes it kind of difficult. Might be able to squeeze something up in there. I'll tell you, if I had like a uh, If I had something like a socket I could stick up in there, I might be able to get to that. And we're going to power it on and see what happens. See, it's got nothing. But if I take and disconnect the wires, I hope I hooked that battery up the last time I had it out of there. <laughs> I took the batteries out and manually charged them on a charger. Now I'm like, did I hook it back up? Did I even stick it in there? Fell off a light, let me check. I'll tell you guys what I did. I went ahead and went inside and got the new battery. So if I hook the new battery up, you can see this works right away. Seems to be working the way it should. So let me tighten this wire up now and see if it's still working that way. And if so, the charge controllers, the other, the other battery for this one must be bad, and also the battery in the other charge controller must also be bad. <clears throat> well, now let's go test the fence again. You see now it's showing that it's fully energized.
I am seeing a pulse, but it's an awful weak pulse. It's going up to about 4,000 kilovolts. So, two issues, at least one being that the battery in the charge controller was bad. And the second being the battery in this was weak. But now we are working. You can see that when I turn this on, you got the low kilovolt, but the change battery lights out. Now when I lay it on the fence and press it, hold it for a second, it goes all the way up to 8,000 kilovolts. That is actually with the Premier 160 solar charger over there. I also got the other one down there was fixed. It also had a bad battery in it. So basically replacing the batteries in both charge controllers and the charge controller tester fixed all my problems. So now the chickens will be back to protect it again from predators from getting in. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, God bless you, God bless your families, God bless your homesteads. If there's anything in this video that you found useful, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, uh, like my channel, subscribe to it, and uh, all that liking and thumbs up and stuff helps us YouTube creators uh, with the YouTube algorithm to get a little bit higher rating or ranking on our videos. And I don't have a lot of subscribers, so I need all the help I can get. So again, if you found anything in this video useful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I don't never ask you for money or Patreon or none of that and I never will. So anyways, one other thing I wanna tell you though is that I have over 600 videos of a homestead lifestyle. I do this every day, I've been doing this for years. I'm not one of those channels that takes and make everything sound like rainbows and flowers and butterflies so if you want to know how true home setting goes definitely subscribe because i show all the stuff the good the bad and everything in between thanks for watching